Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the south, the next direction where the Russians continue their offensive operation and according to information we have during the previous 24 hours and during the previous nights of Ukrainian time the Russians managed to improve their positions further in the western direction and to take under control significant number of fields, fortifications and the three lines between the village of Zalatai and even the village of Prichistovka. The Russians continue their offensive. Now let's talk about the Uglidar direction where the Russians continue attacking the Ukrainian forces after a very long operational pause that had been taking place for three or four days. The Russians resumed their attempts to move further in the western direction. Currently the Russians are focused in attacking the Ukrainian positions that located between the two lines in the fields trying to suppress the Ukrainian positions trying to pin the Ukrainians down and to prepare the foothold before further offensive operation in the western direction. Based on the video we can make a conclusion that the next target of the armored forces of Russian Federation is to move through the coal mine South Donbass number 3 and to cut the road between the village of Vadyane Ugledar and the village of Bogoyavlinka. Now let's move further and let's talk about the most important updates that took place during the previous uh, 12 hours. We are talking about the Russian significant progress between the villages of Krasnogorovka, Georgievka, Maximilianovka and Marinka. As you can see we have adjusted the map in Russian favor and summarizing everything the Russians as a result of offensive operation managed to establish complete control over these significant territories. Before the beginning of Russian attack they were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions with FAP. Mainly the Russians were attacking the prison. This is the uh, Kurahova prison and Maximilian that located to the north of Maximilianovka one of the most important and powerful bases of the armed force of Ukraine in this direction and after very heavy artillery preparation the Russians began offensive. Uh, we have video that was published by the 46th Air Mobile Brigade of the Armored Forces of Ukraine. And in this video we can see the number of Russian vehicles that were involved in that full-scale offensive operation. And the Ukrainians are saying that the Russians were using up to 46 armored vehicles in this attack. 46 armored vehicles, they were attacking from many directions. The Ukrainians basically didn't have enough of forces, not just to stop. They didn't have enough of forces to slow the Russians down. Every single episode show was maybe 10th and 15th vehicles that were moving from different directions and of course the final point of destination of Russian forces was the city, the village of Ostra. We are talking about this and the Russians managed to take the village or city under complete control. We have geolocations, we have map and we have lots of updates and events that confirms Russian control over this territory. Obviously the front line collapsed, the Ukrainian front line collapsed in this area and it's very difficult to understand what the Ukrainians are planning to do next because now the Russians can attack in many directions including the northern and the southern one because from this village most likely the Russians will continue moving in the uh, southwestern direction with the purpose to finish the battle for the village by the name of Maximilianovka and to force the Ukrainians to fall back from this territory completely towards the village of Kurahova. On the other side from the same area the Russians can move further in the western direction with the purpose to take under control the village of uh, by the name of uh, this one small village uh, Astrivsky and of course from the same direction with the small uh, storm troopers uh, troopers groups with the small groups of armed forces of Russian Federation they can move further in the northwestern direction with the purpose to take Alexander and Vavchenko and to finish the creation of Nivolskoye Cauldron so a lot of opportunities for the armed forces of Russian Federation and once again it's very difficult to understand where exactly the Ukrainians are able to slow down the Russians due to this configuration of the line of combat contact also would like to point your attention once again when watching this video there is one important thing that I noted uh, just pay attention how many FPV drones how many artillery forces how many forces how many uh, let's say resources the Ukrainians were using to slow down the Russians so basically the Ukrainians went all in just to slow down the Russians and the Ukrainians failed they failed because the Russians managed to break through uh, now let's talk about additional uh, changes on the ground and additional configurations uh, further in the northern direction uh, the Russians continue attacking in the Ukrainian forces in the uh, city of Grodovka. Today we got additional reports, additional progress on the ground according to pro-Ukrainian mappers, but yet we haven't received 100% confirmation that the, the city of Grodovka was captured by the Russians. Now let's move further. We have additional changes on the ground on New York-Tarieska agglomeration. 
Um, uh, pro neutral mappers reported that as a result of clashes, uh, the Russians managed to establish complete control over the industrial zone of New York. This is at the heart of New York and the Russians managed to secure the northern part. So most likely after the Ukrainians unblocked their gar garage zone inside of this industrial zone, uh, Ukrainians uh, during the previous few days were evacuating the personnel further in the northern direction and when the Ukrainians completed that mission, the Russians captured the territory completely and now the Russians are regrouping before moving further in the north in direction towards the uh, river of uh, Krivoy Tarets. So the Russians will continue moving, trying to encircle the Ukrainians that are located in Taretsk from the south and from the southwest. As for Taretsk itself, we have additional changes on the ground that was confirmed either by uh, both by the neutral mappers and by the video that was published by pro-Ukrainian sources. In this video that was published by 100 mechanized brigade, we can see a number of FPV drone attacks exactly in this points of the city of Taretsk. Based on this video, most of the mappers have adjusted their maps in Russian favor. Now let's move further and let's talk about the Kursk direction where uh, something very interesting continues happening. First, let's talk about the Russian additional progress. According to information we have uh, during the previous 24 hours, during the previous night, the Russians managed to secure the village of Pakrovsky, the Russians managed to answer the village of Lubimovka from the west, and the Russians managed to get as close as possible to the same village from the north or west as well. So significant progress as you can see just during the previous night. Currently there are very heavy clashes in the village of Lubimovka and some Russian sources have already reported that they managed to secure the territory and that Ukrainians were forced to fall back further deep inside of the central part of the Suja area. And we have additional geolocations from the same area how the Russians were FPV droning and attacking Ukrainian vehicles with drones with artillery. In this video we can see Ukraine artillery system that was destroyed as a result of Lancet strike. So once again, significant progress. As for the geolocations, we also have some um, data, some videos that confirms additional progress. In this video, we can see how the Russian soldiers were raising the flag in the central part of uh, the Snagas, the village of Snagas, which com com confirmed complete control over the territory. Furthermore, we have additional videos from the same village, how the Russians were bombing and attacking and destroying Ukrainian vehicles during the battle for the village, and we have additional geolocations from the village of Kamarovka. Uh, in this video we can see uh, the number of uh, several Ukrainian vehicles that were destroyed during the Russian counter-offensive. So the Ukrainians maybe were trying to evacuate personnel using these vehicles, but we see that nothing worked out. Now let's talk about the Ukrainian things, what the Ukrainians are doing to stabilize the situation. And today we start with seeing first videos and first geolocations that confirms that Ukrainians began the full-scale offensive operations towards the village of Glushkova. Uh, we have videos from entire line of combat contact. In the village of Tyotkina, the Ukrainian sor the Russian sources published the video how they managed to discover the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine already on the territory of the city of Tyotkina and as a result of FPV drone strikes the Russians were trying to destroy or damage Ukrainian edge positions. So these uh, FPV drone attacks took place in this area and this video confirms additional progress of the armed force to Ukraine. Furthermore, uh, along the line between Vis the village of Visole on the territory of Russia and the village of Pavlovka, we have some changes on the ground in Ukrainian favor. I'll remind that just yesterday we, we had video how the Ukrainian tank was trying to clear the fields, were trying to clear the pass uh, uh, for Ukraine Ukrainian uh, fight passed for Ukrainian vehicles, but Ukrainian tank got on minefields and was destroyed. And this morning we continue receiving updates. In this video, a little bit to the uh, southwest, we see another video how the Ukrainians were trying to clear the uh, fight path for the Ukrainians. We see Ukraine engineering machine that was clearing the territory from Russian Dragon T's defense fortifications. And after this operation was finished, the Ukrainians launched full scale offensive in this area as well. We don't know for sure how far the Ukrainians managed to get inside of the territory of Russia. The only video that confirms additional progress of the armed force of Ukraine is coming from the south of Isola. In this video with a very poor quality we can see the movements of Ukrainian vehicles along the road between the Ukrainian border and the village of Isola itself and that the Russians as a result of artillery strike or maybe FPV drone strike managed to damage and destroy Ukrainian vehicle. So uh, in this video we might see how the Ukrainians were moving along this road 
road towards the village of Abukhovka and Vesola. And furthermore, some sources reported that the Ukrainians have already established complete control over the village of Vesola and they continue concentration and gathering forces before moving further in the northern direction. The Russians are trying to redeploy additional reinforcements and reserves to the south with the purpose to stabilize the situation. The Russians are using the uh, distance mining equipment. Ukrainians control the village of Vesyem and try to destroy everything that they see. For example, in this video we can see the distance mining meth weapon uh, equipment of the armed forces of Russian Federation that was destroyed as a result of Iskan uh, Heimer strike. And just yesterday we saw another video from most um, from the same direction uh, we might see how the russians brought additional reinforcements and reserves uh, to the line or uh, to the river of the same and how the ukrainians attacked the concentration of russian forces with the cluster rounds so there are very heavy clashes right now here as well the ukrainians are trying to attack the russians with the purpose to slow their counter-offensive operation here and to force the russians to redeploy some reinforcements and reserves back to glushkova region so now once again the war of attrition has begun and the ukrainians uh, can defeat can be defeated easily because now we will see and soon we will understand who has more reserves who has more supply and support and whether the russians are going to move their forces back of course the russians may sacrifice the village of glushkovo kobulki some territory in glushkovo region in favor of restoring control over significant number of territories in surgery direction including some encirclement of ukrainian forces in the same area uh, but uh, the, the consequences can be not very good. Now let's talk about uh, a very important statements that uh, was provided by Vladimir Putin. Uh, he, he, during the previous 24 hours he was interviewed and he was asked about, about the questions of NATO participation and NATO authorization and Western authorization of Ukraine to attack deep inside the territory of Russia. And Putin stated a lot of very interesting things. First of all, NATO countries are not discussing a allowing Ukraine to strike Russia today. We are talking about making a decision on the direct participation of the alliance in the military conflict. Another statement from by Putin. Putin publicly uh, voiced the answer to the case of the West's permissions to launch missile strikes uh, by Ukraine deep in the Russian rear. The main uh, emphasis is that Russian Federation will consider NATO to be directly involved in the military conflict in Ukraine since targets will be guided through Western satellites this is a very important st statement just i would like to keep um, i would like to point your attention we'll discuss in a minute it is now generally accepted that nato is in uh, indirectly involved it follows that the russian federation can use not only tactical nuclear weapons in response but also nuclear weapons it can also shoot down once again satellites that they believe are guiding them to targets and they will consider them participants in war in the war and i'll remind you that a uh, few days ago maybe a week ago we've been discussing we were discussing the uh, statements of different uh, western medias about the situation uh, with the nato russia and if you remember on this 10th of september three days ago uh, at we rep got report uh, from welt that at nato headquarters concerns is growing about a russian nuclear attack in space according to us uh, findings moscow have uh, has launched several killer satellites into space that can be equipped with nuclear weapons if they were used they would send out gigantic waves of electromagnetic pulses with devastating consequences so as you can see uh, the things that we've been discussing three days ago uh, where just three days ago is now co is coming true are coming true by and confirmed by the statements of Vladimir Putin so Russia can use nuclear weapon not on the territory of Ukraine of course not on the territory of NATO of course but the Russians may use the nuclear weapon in space trying to destroy the satellites that western countries and nato are planning or are going to use uh, to coordinate missiles that ukrainians are going to use to attack the territory of old russia and that's it for the short video a military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day bye bye